Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm delighted to be out today on my Norton, my Norton Commando 961 SE. Even though the weather is not terrific, it's dry, so I've just uh, grabbed this little window of opportunity to take the bike out. This is my first ride on the bike in 2024, but more importantly, it is my first ride on the bike since I got it back from Stuart Bodycoat. Now, anybody watching this channel who owns a, a, a Donington Norton and who, who knows anything about Donington Nortons will probably know Stuart or have heard of uh, Stuart Bodycoat. He has uh, got himself a reputation as being the 961 guru and the man to go to if you want your bike really sorting. So at the back end of last year, I got in touch with Stuart and asked him if over the winter he would take my bike and give it a good going over. And he's done that and he's done an absolutely fantastic job. So I wanted to make a video here about uh, what Stuart has done to my bike. Now, when I took the bike down to him, the brief that I gave him was uh, firstly to give the bike a, a full service and to check it over for any issues that he may be aware of because he know, really knows his way around these bikes so any issues that he thinks are likely you know need to need checking or anything else that he, indeed that he comes across as he was you know pulling the bike apart uh, secondly uh, then to um, upgrade any components that he felt needed upgrading i know a lot of particularly the electrical components um uh, stuart has been upgraded for people to, to better quality items particularly bosch items and then lastly i had a couple of niggly problems with the bike which i've had ever since i bought the bike to be honest i just never got around to doing anything about them the first one is a, a very well-known issue and that is the intermittent flashing of the neutral indicator light and the fuel warning light on the, the clocks. Uh, and so apparently that's a very easy fix, so I just asked Stuart if he could fix that. But the, the one big issue that I really wanted him to have a look at is that ever since I got the bike I've had a problem with a false neutral between third and fourth gear. and. I think possibly sometimes between fourth and fifth as well and actually Stuart confirmed that that he thought there was a false neutral between third and fourth and fourth and fifth when he looked at it. So not only was Stuart able to get to the bottom of all of the issues he found uh, quite a few other things uh, on the bike that needed sorting and fixing and so I'm so glad that I took the bike to Stuart I'm now riding it with so much more uh, confidence and also um, so it's so much more enjoyable to ride now particularly with that false neutral having gone now when Stuart had the bike and I think he does this for all customers he sent me regular video updates on what he was doing on issues that he found with the bike and what uh, he was doing and I found these really useful and very very interesting and so it's these that I want to share with you now so as I'm riding along here I'll explain the issues and then I'll just let let Stuart take over and, and talk talk you through um, in his videos uh, what he came up with and, and what he fixed Good morning Simon, hope you're well. Um, I'm cracking on with yours now. Uh, I'm getting stuck into this gearbox concern first. I need to pull the tank and the seat unit off yet and do a full health check. Um, but the gearbox is what I want to really get uh, get into, um, see what this, this issue was, this false neutral. Uh, it seems to be, to, uh, well, testing it on the bench, it seems to be between third and fourth and fourth and fifth, I found a concern. Um, there's a bit of play in the shift mech assembly. That's that's not going to be the root cause of it, but it's certainly not going to help. So I can I can sort that out. That's no problem. Um, the detent wheel that's quite badly worn. It's got a lot of weird wear ridges on it. And if you look at the detent arm, 
that seems to be bent slightly. It doesn't sit square to the detent wheel. Um, so I certainly need to look at that as to why that's doing that. Um, I mean, these were assembled at, at Norton. These were all TIG welded together, these little bits. Um, so, yeah, I'll have a look at that. I don't know if I've got a spare one of these anywhere. Um, I'll have to rummage through all the boxes and see what I've got. I'll pull out the gearbox anyway and just also inspect the, sh the, uh, the selector drum, make sure there's no weird wear ridges on that as well. Um, I don't think there will be. I think most of it's going to be down to this. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know what I find. I'll rework that. Uh, whilst it's in bits, it makes sense to replace the starter gasket. Um, they had a lot of issues with these gaskets. There's a shitty paper on these. put loads of silicon sealant on them, try and seal them up. Um, I used the very latest spec Harley Davidson gasket because this is a clone of a, um, a Harley Sportster starter motor. Um, so yeah, I just use their genuine later gasket, which is a it's like a rubber coated steel gasket of an inner lip seal. So yeah, they're really good. Um, whilst it's in bits, makes sense. Um, so pull the starter out. Clean off all the RTV that they've put on, uh, replace the gasket. Whilst the starter's out, I'll also just pull off the cap on the solenoid and just make sure that the contacts ain't heavily worn as well. So, isn't that a great little video update? And as you can imagine, I was delighted that Stuart had got straight in there with the, you know, the big problem that I'd taken to him, which was the, uh, the, the false neutral, and he just found what it was straight away. But what's interesting, in order to get in there to have a look at that, he'd had to take the primary drive off and the clutch basket off and everything. And just take a look now at what he found with the clutch basket. So this is your clutch basket. I need to balance you against something here. Let's try bearing. There we go. We've got some really loose rivets going on there. And um, they've not been fully riveted at the back. So these four of them. Um, I'll also check the security if you start a ring gear. But yeah, I need to get those. I, normally the, the, the cure I found, I clamp them all up and have them TIG welded. As you can imagine, I'm absolutely delighted that Stuart found that issue with the uh, clutch basket because that, you know, that could have been disastrous if that had actually, uh, those rivets had sheared and or, or it had, have, you know, wobbled out a sink or something whilst I was riding along. So, um, yeah, absolutely delighted. And again, that's just another good reason for having taken the bike to him and for having it checking over. Anyway, um, having found that, he sorted out the uh, gearbox uh, problem for me, sent me a, another uh, video of having sorted it out, so I'll play you that now. Hi, Simon. So, yeah, I've managed to find a replacement detent wheel and detent arm. These are your old ones. Um, if you look at the detent wheel, you can see where the actual bearing, it's just been running sort of halfway across. It's not been on the full face of the, the wheel itself, and it's it's put in a few little divots and ridges. So that's, excuse me, that's most probably what the main issue has been. So just quickly show you now, it's not been very smooth because we've not got the support bearing for the shift mech. So that's waggling around, and I've also not got the engine speed. I've only got my hand turning it. Um, but yeah, so we've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I could not do that at all before. It was getting completely wedged up between third, fourth, fourth and fourth. Excuse me, fourth and fifth. Can't get my words out this morning. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed that sorted everything out on that one. Um, I'm happy enough with it so far. Uh, I will slide the gearbox out anyway. I mean, it makes sense. I'm bloody here, aren't I? So I've got to take the shift mech off regardless just to rework that to get that free play out of there. So what it is, the spring locates the two separate parts of the shift mech. But at the moment, this part is a little bit wider than this part. So it's holding the spring apart slightly. That's why I've got this free play going on. Um, so I'll fettle that and now I can set the shift mech up properly. And it's only a case of five bolts. And I've got the whole gear set out anyway because it's a set gearbox. So I will pull that out and just closely inspect that uh, selector drum as well. And so it makes economic sense. We're here anyway. Let's just check it, be sure. 
So, <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Anyway, after that, uh, Stuart, uh, as he said he was going to in that uh, clip, he um, stripped, uh, t pulled apart the, uh, the, the gearbox um, and took the selector drum out. And he found another uh, problem in there. He found that the, the end plate that secures the, uh, the selector drum was also bent. And I'll, I'll play you that clip now. Another little interesting find, the retaining plate for the selector drum is also bent. Um, so this is the retaining plate, selector drum here obviously, retaining plate, gearbox end plate, and you can see there's a gap at the end, so this is slightly misaligned. Not so much an issue though, I'll be able to strip that down and just straighten that out, no problem. So, you know, we're finding all those issues, um, I think that's the... Uh the gearbox sorted and riding the bike now I can tell you what a huge difference this gearbox is a beauty now it is beautiful really beautiful it is a joy to be riding this bike and you know giving it a bit of welly and you know whacking up and down the gearbox it's great thank you very much Stuart if you <laughs> watch this what a huge difference you've made Anyway, so moving on to, to, to the next update that I received from Stuart, whilst he was pulling all of this apart and the clutch basket off and what have you to get to the gearbox, he also thought that there was something wrong with the backlash gear. It wasn't uh, moving as it should do. So uh, he uh, had a look at that and, uh, yeah, found a problem with that as well. Looks like it had not been assembled correctly in the factory, quite possibly. So this is the update and the fix which uh, Stuart gave me then on the backlash gear. Definitely right to pull this apart. This is your backlash gear. Remember I said it felt dead rough and tight. Reason being, this spring was not correctly seated. So there's a witness mark there that corresponds with that there. Flip it over, there's a rub mark here. And that's corresponding with that part there. So what's happened, when they built it up, the spring has not been in its correct recess. It's been slightly on this ridge. And that's ended up on the wonk somehow. God knows how they got magic gate together like that, but either way, no worries. I'll just clean these marks up, build it back up, and then happy day should be good. There we go, it's all sorted out now. So I found that both dowels have been fitted in backwards. I fitted those correctly to the correct position, and now this works as it should. So nice and free. That way it hits the stop. And the other way, it's against the spring, so it's spring-loaded. Um, I've got a special tool this has to go into so I can pre-load it before refitting it. But yeah, happy days, another little bit sorted. So again, another issue that I wasn't aware of from uh, riding the bike. You know, maybe, maybe I was, uh, you know, less smooth or something like that uh, when they're riding it, because the bike certainly feels much, much smoother now, as you imagine, with sorting out that backlash gear and the and the loose in the clutch basket, it's riding much more smoothly. But I wasn't aware of these problems, and they, you know, could have uh, been more serious had I not caught them in time. So I'll say again, I'm very glad that I took the bike to Stuart and had the benefit of his expertise, looking it over and finding these issues. Another r rather worrying issue which uh, Stuart found, though I haven't got a video clip of this, was. Um, the um, the uh, drive sprocket um, was uh, loose on the on the spline coming out of the the gearbox. Um, something to do with the the tab, the way that it's fastened on with the tab. So, thankfully, there were no consequences of that. There were no damage or anything. But uh, Stuart told me that he'd uh, seen on other bikes it uh, that had totally destroyed the the gearbox. So. Again, I considered myself lucky with that, and also I'm, I'm very glad that uh, I took the bike to Stuart and he, he found that. So, on, on top of those, those issues there that, that he found, uh, Stuart gave the, the bike uh, a full service as well. He did some upgrades for me, so he fitted a, a crank breather, because mine being one of the earlier SE bikes didn't have a crank breather. I'd never actually had a problem with that, but I thought it was worth having the upgrade. He also upgraded some of the uh, sensors for me to better quality Bosch items. He fixed the flickering neutral light and the, uh, the fuel light. On top of that, I have to say that Stuart goes the extra mile 
uh, with stuff. I know this is sounding like an advert for his services, but it really is because I'm just so impressed. He goes the extra mile with just all the little things. So uh, a couple of examples. One is um, that um, the uh, bobbins, the rear stand bobbins, you have to get the bike up on a paddock stand. Ever since I got the bike, the right hand one was broken off, the stud was broken off inside the lug. He drilled that out and re-tapped it for me so that I could now fit uh, bobbins. And I've actually, uh, since I got the bike back, I've made myself some bobbins on my lathe. So I'll do a separate video of that, of making the, the bobbins. Um, so I can now get the, uh, the Norton up on a, a, a paddock stand, which is fantastic. Also, I had a small scratch on the, the rear of the bike, on the, the paintwork behind the seat and he's polished that out for me as well, buffed that up, polish, polished that out. And the on the brake master cylinder, it's a black painted cap, it's a plastic uh, uh, cylinder reservoir with a metal painted cap on it and that the, uh, the black paint was peeling off the aluminium cap there. And so he cleaned that up and repainted that for me as well. And, and then he gave the whole bike a, a valet and it's just little touches like that that, that make all, all the difference. Um, oh yeah, and the reflector on, on the back number plate was, was bent and damaged. He straightened it out, blasted it and repainted it for me. And things like that, that he didn't have to do, but you know, he's a perfectionist. Uh, and um, you know, I, I really appreciate uh, the difference. So having got the bike out, getting it out for a ride now I've got to say that I am so glad that I took it to Stuart it is riding beautifully it goes so well does the the bike now I can see me putting quite a lot of miles on this bike this summer now it's an absolute joy to ride so um, I've made this video because I thought if you um, own a 961 or um, you know if you're considering buying one it's just very interesting to see these issues that came up and you know what pleased me is how easily Stuart fixed them now I say easily obviously I, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it so you know he's, he's an expert in these these matters but um, you know he was able to fix them all so I think going forward now I can be confident that the bike is good to go, good to ride, I just need to keep on top of it in terms of um, you know, servicing and, and maintenance going forward. I think we've now got on top of any issues that you know, what we might call legacy issues if you like with the bike. So the, the only other thing now is um, the cam chain. I think maybe if I put some decent miles on it this summer, next year I'll take it back to Stuart and let him um, replace the cam chain and the cam chain tension. Appar apparently there's now an upgraded, improved um, um, uh, one that you can, you can put on, so I think I'll have that upgrade done next year. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you found it interesting, hope you found it useful. See you again next time. Bye-bye.